Hi everyone, welcome back to another week of Kids Church Online. I hope that you are looking forward to a break from homeschooling. Have some good times in the holidays. Stay off the screens, go outside, do what you like, as long as you don't go more than 10 kilometers from your home or meet up with too many people. Anyway, Kids Church Online is going to continue even though it's holidays. Let's keep learning about Elisha. But before we start that, are you learning the books of the Old Testament? Do you know them all already? I'm so looking forward to seeing you in person again so that you can all impress me with your knowledge of the books of the Old Testament. But just so you can keep practicing, here's our song. of the Old Testament and I wonder do you remember what we learned about last week in our Elisha series Elisha met someone else again someone who was not even from Israel who didn't know God but then trusted that God could heal him Naaman the commander of the army of Aram had leprosy and he listened when his servant girl told him that the prophet in Israel, the man of God, Elisha, could heal him from his leprosy. Now, Naaman went to Israel to see Elisha, but when he got there, he didn't even meet Elisha. Elisha's messenger told Naaman to go and wash in the Jordan River. Naaman was not impressed with this advice. He didn't come all this way just to go and wash in what may have not even been a particularly nice river, but he still trusted God. His servant convinced him that if he'd been asked to do an amazing thing, he would have done it. So being asked to do a simple thing meant he should do that too. Naaman trusted God. He but washed himself in the Jordan River. Do you remember how many times? Seven times. And when he came out, his leprosy was gone. It was a miracle. By trusting in God, he had been healed. Even though he wasn't an Israelite, even though he didn't even really know God, by trusting in God, he was saved. Now, who else was trusting in God? Well, Naaman did, his servant did, but how about Elisha's servant Gehazi? Was he trusting God to provide for him? Not really. He decided he wanted the gifts that Naaman had brought, even though Elisha had said he would not accept them. Gehazi was greedy and he wasn't trusting God to provide for him. And what happened to Gehazi? He ended up with leprosy, just like what Naaman had had, because he didn't trust God. Gehazi was an Israelite. He should have known God. He should have known everything he was capable of. And yet he was following his own ideas, not trusting God. Well, today we're going to hear more about Elisha. We're coming towards the end of our series about Elisha. So let's go to the Good News Theatre. Aram was at war with Israel. The king of Aram kept making plans to attack Israel, but Elisha 
was warning the king of Israel about the king of Aram's plans, so none of the attacks were successful. The king of Aram thought there was a spy in Aram. Which of us is on the side of Israel, he said, but was told that it was Elisha, the man of God, who was the only one who could be passing on the information. Elisha, the man of God, tells the king of Israel the words you speak in your bedroom, the king was told. Find out where Elisha is so I can send men to capture him, the king insisted. He is in Dothan. So the king of Aram sent horses and chariots and a strong force to Dothan. They got there at night and surrounded the city. Elisha's servant got up early and saw that the city was surrounded. What shall we do? he asked Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha said. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Elisha knew that God's army was bigger than the army of Aram. Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see, so that his servant would be able to see God's army protecting them. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around. As the Aramean army approached, Elisha prayed to God, that he would make the Aramean army unable to see properly. They didn't recognise Elisha. He told them that they were in the wrong place. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. Elisha led them all the way to the city of Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha prayed that God would let the Arameans see again and they recognised where they were. The king asked Elisha for advice. Shall I kill them? Elisha replied, Do not kill them. Give them food and water so they can eat before being sent back to their home. So the Aramean army were given a meal to eat and then returned to their home. And because of this, the king of Aram stopped attacking Israel and there was peace in both lands for some time. Well, now it's time for Kids Church Catch Up. Let's see what Olivia has been doing during lockdown. Hi everyone, I'm Olivia. I'm one of the Kids Church leaders. Um, during lockdown, I've been watching a bit more um, sport than usual. I've been watching the Olympics which are really great and quite um, encouraging and help distract me from lockdown. Um, I've also been watching um, the tennis on the US Open recently and just spending time with my family which has been nice um, and something that God encourages me through is um, thinking about how God is in control of everything and how the most important thing in the most important event has already happened. Uh, Jesus died for our sins and um, conquered death and he's risen again so we can be right with God. So even during these uncertain times it helps me to remember that um, I need not worry because the most important thing has already happened. I'm already ready right with God because of that and as all Christians are. So anyway I hope to see you all soon. Hopefully we'll be able to come out of lockdown and see each other again in person. Yeah, yeah. take care everyone. Bye. Well lots of strange things happened in our story today. There were people who could see things that others couldn't, people who couldn't see at all, and at the moment of triumph, when the Aramean army was surrounded and at the mercy of Israel, they gave them a meal and then sent them home. Is that what you were expecting to happen? This passage shows us an important truth about God. He is always with his people 
and his forces outnumber anyone who opposes him. The Israelites thought that they were outnumbered and surrounded. But Elijah's servant had his eyes opened so he could see the spiritual reality of God's army. This allowed the Israelites to show grace and kindness to their enemies, just as Jesus did on the night when he was arrested. His disciples were prepared to fight to keep Jesus from being taken away, but Jesus told them to put down their swords. Could Jesus have summoned a fiery army to defeat his enemies? Of course he could have. But instead, he responded with grace towards those who put him to death. He trusted in God's plan and he prayed for those who had crucified him to be forgiven. Now, we can only know that God is always with us by faith. Jesus promised his followers that he would be with them to the very end of the age, and that includes us too. We may not look out a window and see a fiery army, but we can trust in God's promises. Now, sometimes you might feel a bit like the Israelites. You might feel like you're outnumbered. There might not be many other Christians at your school or in your friendship group. You might feel that you are alone in trusting God and might feel afraid to say what you believe. Now, Elisha's servant felt the same way. But was Elisha afraid when he saw the Aramean army surrounding them? He told his servant not to be afraid because there were more with them than there were who were against them. Now, God is always with us too. We may not be able to see him or his army, but we can trust his promises because we know what he has done in the past. No one is more powerful than God, so his followers have nothing to fear. They don't need to fight back because they know that God will fight for them. Instead, you can be kind to people who are unkind to you, and you can pray for those who hurt you, just like Jesus told his disciples to do. This is what Elisha did for that Aramean army and what Jesus did for those who crucified him. And it's what God has done for us. Did the Arameans deserve the kindness? Did those who nailed Jesus to the cross deserve this kindness? Do we who have sinned against God deserve the kindness of being part of his family? Well, those who trust in Jesus are treated better than they deserve. They receive forgiveness and they become part of God's family. And if we have been treated this way, then we can trust God and treat others with the same kindness. This is not always easy, but we can ask God to help us to trust in him and to treat others with the same grace that he has shown us. When we trust in Jesus, we are part of God's family and no opposition is a match for God and his army. We can pray to God that he will remind us of this truth whenever we're facing opposition. Well, it's time for prayer now. Here's Naomi. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for always looking after your people who trust you, like Elisha in today's story. Thank you for always being there for us and fighting for us. We don't need to be afraid. 
Help us to be kind to those around us, even if they're unkind. And help us to remember the kindness and love you have shown us first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Naomi. And now it's time for the memory verse. Here's Jan. Hi, everyone. Glad to be back with you. I believe that you're on school holidays. That's fantastic. Well, we're going to do our memory verse again this week, but before we do that, I want to shout out for a big thank you to the Cullen family, for Eleanor, Charlotte, Millie, Josh. That's fantastic that you sent in your memory verse of Psalm 121. So we're going to watch that, and then we're going to have another verse as well. So thanks, Cullens. Take 51. Psalm 121, verses 1 to 3. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Woohoo! All right, well, let's just practice our first three verses and then we're going to do verse four as well because verse four actually, actually joins on with verse three. Now, just a reminder of some of these things. These Zs here are the word slumber. Now, remember, slumber is like just dozing a bit, just feeling a little bit sleepy. So, let's do all our verses. Psalm 121, verses one to three. I lift up my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Great job. All right, let's add another verse in here. And this starts with a word that you may not have heard very often. It's a bit of an old-fashioned word, probably. Indeed. Now, that just means, like, exclamation. <gasps> it's actually happening. So, indeed is like an emphasis to say, well, this is actually great. Indeed, he, who is God, who watches over Israel, will neither... Zeds mean slumber, nor, what do you think that one is? I hope you're good at working out my funny pictures. Sleep, so they're fast asleep. So God, we know, doesn't have a, a rest or a cat nap in the afternoon. He doesn't go to sleep at night because he's always there to watch over us, to keep us safe, to protect us, and to hear our prayers any time we want to pray to him and he loves to hear our prayers so let's just try verse four then we'll do three and four and then we'll do all of it together okay verse three he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber indeed he who watches over israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God watches us all the time. All right, let's say the whole four verses now. Let's start by saying Psalm 121 verses one to four. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Well, I hope you, like the Cullens, can send his, us in a video of Psalm 121, because if you leave it much longer, it might even get more verses. So who can send in the first four verses? That would be great. Send it in to myself or Michelle and Alex will put it on our video for next week. Thanks. Bye. 
Well, now it's time for craft. I hope you've got your print sheets printed and all ready to go. Now our first craft today, you need this sheet. Now I've already colored mine in. You can see here, Elisha's servant, very scared when he sees the giant Aramean army surrounding them. But we know the Lord's fiery army is up here. Now, you can see there's a dotted line across the middle here. We're going to fold along that dotted line and temporarily hide the army. So, here's the servant, Elisha's servant, afraid, saying to Elisha, what shall we do? And Elisha prayed that his servant would be able to see the army of the Lord and not be afraid. And there they are. There they are. So that's our first craft. Mostly colouring today and a little bit of folding. So you can do that one easily. Now our second craft, we need to print this page, but you only need one of these verses, all right? So there's enough for 10 people on this sheet. So if you've got lots of shields that you want to make, you'll still only need to print one page. So first thing I'm going to do is cut out my verse. And then for this craft, because we're going to make a fiery shield, you'll also need a paper plate. So, here's my verse. It says, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. That's what Elisha said to his servant. Now, I've got a large paper plate. If you've got a small one at home, you can still make a shield out of a small one. But this is the one I've got. Now, I'm going to glue my verse into the middle of the back of the plate so that it bends outwards looking like a shield. So step one, put my verse on. Here we go. Now you'd say, that doesn't look like a great shield, Michelle. How am I meant to hold this? Well, I've got a piece of just light cardboard here. You can use whatever you've got at home. Cut up a wheat fix box, I don't know. Uh, probably wait till you finish the wheat fix, might would be best. Um, now you need to be able to staple the sides of your shield handle to the sides of your shield and have enough space to fit your hand in so that you can cover your hand. I think this piece is actually a little bit long for my hand, so I'm just going to cut a bit off and then I'm going to staple my edges onto my shield so that there's a bit of a bump in the middle for you to fit your hand through. You can measure it before you uh, do your stapling. Ah, there we go. Now, my shield fits on my hand, but it doesn't look great, does it? It's a bit boring. So let's make it a fiery shield. Now, I have got some tissue paper here that I'm going to glue onto my shield. So I'm just gonna put whole lot of glue on my shield and then I'm going to decorate. Now if you haven't got tissue paper or cellophane or something fiery to decorate with, you can just use coloured pencils or crayons, textures, whatever you've got. But here we go, here's my fiery shield. Sticking some bits on, just putting bits everywhere. It's not my uh, best decorating moves, perhaps, but it's going to look great. I'm confident it's going to look great by the end. But don't glue over where your verse is, because you do want to be able to read that verse to remind us about what we learnt today. That even when you look like you're outnumbered, the Lord is always with you. And his army is always bigger than anyone else's. All right, how's it coming along? What do you think? Still got a few spaces to fill in over here with my fiery colors. Bit of yellow. I think that's, whoops, just lost a little bit there. Just want to cover up all the bits where I put glue so I don't stick myself to my shield. 
But here we go. I think that's a good start. Here we are. Here's my fiery shield. Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. This is a fiery shield just like what might have been carried by the Lord's fiery army. I hope you have fun making these crafts. Don't forget, if you don't want to make a craft, you can always answer the questions on the discussion sheet. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next week for our very last week in our series on Elisha. Let's look forward to a big finish. I'll see you next time. Bye.